Marcel, welcome. Welcome, thank you. We're here to talk about something pretty close to your heart and I think close to a lot of French people's hearts, the 1998 World Cup. Uh -huh. Going into the tournament, with it being a home tournament, was that an extra pressure or an advantage for you? First of all, it's 24 years and I'm still happy like it was yesterday to talk about it. So it's a lot of pressure playing in your uh, home soil. You see, it's, uh, um, it's the friends, the family, the, the, your, it's, you are in your yard. And, and at the same time, it boosts you, you know. Um, and luckily, we were experienced players at the time. I was about to go to 30 years old. So I managed to capture the pressure and to, you know, diffuse it into a performance. Sometimes if you are too young and you play on this kind of competition on your home soil, the pressure will, will, will lead you to, uh, to lose your ability, yes. The French media are, are famous for adding or taking away a lot of uh, conversations when it comes to the national team. What, what feeling did you get from the media around this? Were, were they saying there's no room for error here? Were they saying you guys were the favourites? What do you remember from what the media were talking about? Oh, at the time, they were blaming the coach. Oh. They were not convinced about our ability to go to the final because tactically the setup was not really the way they were thinking of. So a lot of controversial discussion from tactical side Physically also, the, the, the coach made us work very hard before the tournament where they were not really convinced that it was a good way. So a whole lot of discussion. You know how it is. It's part of the beauty of football. You know, you allow the, 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 the media to diffuse the wrong information or good information, controversial information. It sells better, you know. Important that when you are internally into the system as a player, you still keep your focus. Your focus is to win matches after matches and, and try to, to, stay, to stay, you know, uh, um, focused. Talk to me about your memory about work, walking out for that, for that opening game of the World Cup. Like, what, what were your emotions? Do you have any vivid memories? Opening game was in Marseille. It was awful. Yes, it was awful because the first game, you don't know physically where you are. Uh, awful because uh, and beautiful at the same time. I remember the South African was singing in their dressing room. We could hear it, <laughs> and we were like, you know, uh, stress, over stress, uh, not knowing really physically uh, how things are going to be. So awful, awful for like uh, many minutes until Dugarry scored the first goal, and then now yes. We are in the competition, ready for action, ready to show the skills and, and, and the, the, the capability of France to, to perform. And then obviously you use that to be undefeated, finish top of the group. In the knockout stages, you ended up uh, grinding out a really tough game against the Italians in the penalties. Uh, and then you had a tough match against the Croatians as well. Do you think those two really tough tests prepared you for the great Brazil team that you were going to meet in the final? Probably, yes, yes, yes. We had Paraguay also, which was quite difficult with this golden goal during the extra time. Uh, yes, I'm sure it has built up also uh, the idea of uh, us being the, the, you know, the potential winner. Because every element, Laurent Blanc came up Paraguay uh, against Italy. We see the young players who took the penalty shootout. Um, Croatia, um, Lilian Thuram came into the system from nowhere. <laughs> Unbelievable, if you remember the, the goal he scored two, never scored in his career. So a whole lot of elements. And then for the final, we knew that we were having that uh, Cherry on top of the cake, which was uh, Zinedine Zidane. So. I've heard about him. I've heard about him. They tell me he's a good player. <laughs> he's more than that. He's more than that. And um, he did not perform really strongly during the, um, you know, the group stage or the knockout stage. And um, yeah, he followed up really what the coach told us. You know, uh, look at the Brazilian during the free kick corners. They are not focused. 
the attention is not there guys this is where we have an opportunity to make the difference you were told that before the game the coach yeah on the, on the on the you know um, the, the meeting you know before the match so to uh, uh, Manuel Petit and also uh, Jokaev to allow Zidane to just kick it. Wow, that is amazing. Mm. Well, that's why he's the coach, I guess. <laughs> so talk to me, you, you've been through a lot in the World Cup, you've been through a lot of pressure, a lot of tense moments. You probably couldn't have prepared for the news that you received ahead of the final. What are your memories of finding out that something had happened to R9 or maybe R9 wouldn't be featuring? Did you think that was mind games? Did that put you off your original plan? Nothing, no information. No, no, we didn't know anything. No, no, he you, was in. You just found out on the pitch when you got on the pitch. No, we don't know anything. He has started uh, normally. It's like uh, you know, for France against Tunisia, we had Turam that was supposed to play, and maybe the stomach was you know the to handle the pressure, pressure of the sponsors, pressure of uh, the match. You know, Brazil are two hundred million, so he had maybe a little uh, you know uh, knock, and uh, no, no, we didn't know anything. No, no, no. no. And he was that, on the field and I guess that that played into your favor because it didn't matter what was happening in the Brazil locker room you guys were just focused on trying to lift the trophy in France honestly uh, your question is out of you know what we normally discuss we don't remember about the second Brazil had the time to shine in 1994. Uh, sure. And 2002 with an amazing team and Ronaldo was in. Wow, just amazing. The 98, it was with us. And we don't mind about what happened, what was the element. We won it. We won it clearly on a three nil down. Can you imagine on our home soil uh, with uh, all the 80,000 people that was there and enjoying the, the quality of the match. So whatever has happened before <laughs> to lead to the match, we don't want to know anymore. Amazing. <laughs> or you and your Ronaldo thing. <laughs> we, we, winning, winning the 1998 World Cup seemed like a, a cultural shift in France. It felt like there were players from all different cultural backgrounds coming together and it almost created a shift in society in France. Did you feel the magnitude of it? Did you feel like there was communities from North Africa, West Africa, all over the world that had come together and helped France achieve the biggest thing they'd achieved in sport. Wow, lots of responsibility that you are bringing on my on our shoulders. <laughs> Something has happened here, yeah, probably, um, and people from origin have been able to identify themselves to to the nature of uh, of the, the the players that was in the team. It was nice to see people origin. Um, taking the, the, the French flag uh, uh, on that particular moment. But after that, our responsibility stopped there. We are happy that probably uh, the fact that France won has boosted the economy. You know, uh, people have spent. You are happy. We are world champion. So uh, you, you want to spend and you want to boost the economy. If you are expatriate at that time and you mention you are from French man, then your business, uh, you know, the connection and the happiness around you suddenly lead to, you know, opportunities eventually. So, yes, indirectly, we've helped the economy to go and the uh, awareness of, you know, and, and people have had the belief on it. So it's nice, it's nice. It stayed a time that, you know, not in the long term, it stays, uh, you know, it was quite a short, uh, you know, where people could uh, identify themselves to, to the nature of uh, of uh, how the team was, yes, yes, yes. What do you... If it's in French, I can explain a bit longer, but uh, I think it's enough. Sure. <laughs> what are your What are your memories of after the final? Tell me about the parties. Tell me about the celebrations. Be honest. Very poor. <laughs> Very poor. Honestly, you want me to bring you to another level? Very poor because we said, "Oh, guys, let's go and take the car to go in town." Because remember, we stay a month plus uh, all together, all the time. So after the winning, we say, but let's go in town. And you have all the security guy of the place where we were, you know, at the camping. Say, nobody is moving from, uh, because there's craziness in town and you are not safe, guys. 
What are you telling us? We are not safe. We want to go and enjoy with the population, you know? We want to jump, you know, like the singer who jump, you know, off the stage and people will carry them. <laughs> I will have jump up because I know people will carry me because it was the moment to shine. And, but unfortunately, we were just among, again, the guys and it was beautiful. I celebrate the way Michael Jordan has been celebrating his trophy cigar. with a cigar. Yeah. Nice and easy. You know, the and the cup, no, no alcohol. Okay, okay. Just the trophy was fine. And quality, you know, you are the man. Like you, you understand what I mean? You are the man. I don't smoke, eh? yeah. but just still, for the picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I have it here. Yeah, something like that. Oh just, my God, I love yeah. it. So just, you are the man. You are the man. What else? Yeah. What else? You know, the cup is here. You are cool. What else? What else? It's the dream, you know. I've seen uh, Diego Armando Maradona holding it, it was my idol. And it's also something that reminds me all the sacrifice that I've done since I'm 13 years old at the academy. On the 15, I was in the national team singing the national anthems. On the 17, the 21, you know, it's a, it's a whole journey to, to, and to lead to success. So it's good, it's sweet, it's sweet. And I like one of the media in France say, uh, the, the France winning the World Cup is, is for eternity. It's for eternity, guys. So we are now 24 years after, and you, you know, it, it's still there, hot. It's still, it's still hot. It's still like uh, <laughs> yesterday. So it's good. It's sweet. And what do you think about this current class of uh, the French generation? Uh, you've got Killian, you've got some unbelievable young players that have already won it. Can they do it again this year? No, but in 2018, we all the time say that we were mature players when we you know, started the World Cup, uh, but they have the talent. They really have talent. When you look at them individually, they, can you imagine we have five major first choice players who have been injured and still you are able to produce this kind of performance and impression. So this is more than talent. We were having Zidane, he was maybe having something special. And Mbappe also is, is, is pushing strongly and we have the belief that they can do it again for the second time. Only now that we are speaking, three matches left. Three match and if you win those three match, you are world champion again. So we want them to, to beat and crash all the records. You know, since the past four World Cup, I think none of the World Cup winners have been able to pass the, the group stage. Bam, they crash it. Uh, and uh, since 60 years ago, none of the team have been able to win two World Cup consecutively. Only Brazil have done it. They're probably going to crash it. So we are in the belief, we are in the, you know, we are strong. When we are French, we are strong. Well, there's only one way to find out. Marcel, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.